Hello everyone and welcome to this little session on how to find the note names and how to build simple basic chords on those note names. And the best name to learn for starters is to look for the two black notes together and imagine the two black notes as a little dog kennel and D for dog lives inside his kennel. And that's a good one to learn because D is the middle uh, letter in a group of seven. We've only got seven alphabet letters. We've got D, C, B, A to the left, going down, and E, F, G to the right, going up. So by looking at the two black notes together, imagine it as a dog kennel. D for dog lives inside there, and you'll never forget that. We can take the little roof away now because there is the roof. D is in the middle. Now just sharps and flats. Sharps go one up to the right, so D sharp is there, and flats go one down to the left. Normally they're black notes, but not every time. I mean, for instance, let's go up to F. Where's F? D, E, F. F sharp is one to the right, and F flat, if you want to be clever, is another white note. It's E, really. It's one to the left. So F sharp, one to the right, F flat would be one to the left. But it's not often that you find um, white notes as sharps or flats because we're going to keep it simple. And we're going to use a simple formula to find the first basic major chord of C. We want to find the C note. Let's put, the, put that little counter on the C note. And now all we have to say is four and three, which is what we count. From the C, counting every note, black and white, we go up. One, two, three, four and we play that note and then we go up three one two three and we play that note so there is your basic chord of C major let's do another one let's do D major there's D for dog D now we count up one two three four and now we count up three. One, two, three. And there is D major. Now to find minor chords, we simply reverse the four and three, and we count three and four. So let's do the D one, we'll stay there. D, one, two, three. And now count four. One, two, three, four. And that gives us D minor. So to keep it simple, when you reverse that four turning into three, there's the one with the four, one, two, three, four. That's major. And then just move one to the left in the middle. And there is D minor. Let's take the counters away for a moment and do a C major. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And now we just drop the middle one down to make C minor major you can hear the difference minor sounds sad now let's keep that counting going because to make a seventh chord all we do is add an extra three on the top so let's do the C again we'll have C count four one two three four because we're doing major one two three to find C major and now we continue three on top. One, two, three. And we do that every time to find the seventh. So there is C7. And once again, if you want to make a C minor seven, we take that middle note of the first three, drop it down one, reverse it, so it's three and four. And we put the three at the top. Let's take these silly counters away now. We'd do without them, we don't need them. Let's do one more. We'll have, uh, let's do a B flat major. There's your B flat note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And to make it B flat minor, we drop the middle one down. So we reverse it to go three and four. And then if we wanted to make a B flat minor seven, we just stick three on the top. One, two, three. And there is B flat minor seven. 
Now, all these formula do is give us the basic ingredients for a C or a C minor, for an F or an F minor. But of course, that's in what they call root position because the name note is at the bottom. As you get more proficient, you'll be able to, what they call, invert the chord. That's take the bottom note and stick him at the top. So you've still got the same ingredients, but you've got the ingredients in a different order. So there's your C. But now to make a minor, you've got to remember that the one that you drop down is now at the bottom. So a lot of the formula goes out the window. You have to be very careful. It's good to work the chords out from the keynote at the bottom. But then once you've found the, the notes for your chord, then you can begin to play them in different positions. That's what we're going to be looking at in the uh, next little section that I do. And that's going to be putting the chords in convenient positions, what they call inversions, turning the chord from C there, perhaps we'll put the C at the top, and then it changes to F beautifully, a G7 and back to C. So that's what we'll be looking at next time, is putting chords into better inversions so that you don't have to jump your hand about the keyboard and uh, take it easy. Thank you very much, that's it, take it easy. Until next time, we'll see you soon.